Hey guys, I'm Zandy Luciano with the Fusion team, and today we're going to be looking at probing inside Fusion Cam. Probing is useful for operations and parts that have multiple setups. So take for example this part, where we're going to have one setup machining the bottom surface, which we then flip over and finish by machining the top surface. We may also have odd things such as this base, this boss right here, where we need to contour this, but we want it to be concentric to this through hole that we drilled in the previous operation. We're going to go over that, exactly how to set that all up. But first, one thing you need to note. You do need to have an existing work coordinate system offset that you can drive off of. So for our example for this, we're going to be using this back center surface of this jaw. Now the Z axis is going to be at the bottom of this vise, and it's going to be along the center point. So between operations, since this back jaw is fixed, this G54 position will not change. And that's important because we need something to drive the probe off of that's going to be consistent. Now we will update our G55 and run our operations off of a G55, but our goal is to keep the 54 consistent. So to show you what that means and really make that visible, we're just going to dive right in by creating a new setup. We're going to select our model right here. We're going to choose our model, not our model origin, our selected point. And our selected point is going to be this point right right here and that's our G54. It's also going to be our G55 to a certain degree but we'll explain that later. Our stock is going to be from solid which we have modeled right here. Hide that again and now under the post process tab this is where things are going to start getting interesting. Our WCS offset is what drives all of our regular operations such as adaptive, contouring, pocketing, parallel, etc. However the probe WCS override is what's going to drive the probing operation and the probing operation is then going to update the WCS offset. So if we create the WCS to be 1 which is G54 we're going to actually use G55 for this and we want our probe to run off of G54. So our probe is going to use this center point that we have known it's going to probe some surfaces and it's going to update our G55 position and we'll get into that right now. So we're going to go ahead and rename this to demo. I've had to take a couple of takes to do this. So that's going to be using our G55. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a probing operation. And the first thing you're going to notice is when you select tools, there's two new sample libraries, inches and metric probes. And you can also create your own like I did and threw it into drill chuck because that's the closest thing that looks like a housing of a probe body. Now the geometry tab for the probing operations is actually pretty intelligent. So if I go ahead and turn off the part and show the stock, I'm going to show you what happens when you select the top surface like this. It intelligently recognizes that you might want to know the X and Y positions of this, but you can also select it to do the Z surface. So it's going to take a guess and give you the best option by default, but if it's not what you want, you can always change it under here. It also has a bunch of other cool features such as if you wanted to do the outside walls, it will probe the outside, or if you just wanted to do one side, it will do one, or if you choose a corner, it will then do the corner. And whatever you choose to probe is how it's going to update. So take for example the Z axis, the Z surface right here. This is going to do the X and the Y and it's going to do the center point of it. If I only do one wall right here, it's going to update right on that wall. It's going to update the X axis. If I do the corner, it will update the X and the Y in that position. So you got to be a little careful about how you do it because if I select this operation and I tell all of our features that our G54 is, or sorry, our WCS is there, but when we update our probe, it actually moves it to this green point right here, then everything's going to be off. So instead of doing it that way, what we do need to do is we need to actually offset it, and I'm going to show the part again, to the center on the X axis only. So to do that, we're going to select one surface, and we're going to select the other surface, and what this is going to do is it's not going to touch the Y axis at all, it's just going to change the X WCS for G55. So if your part is say 50,000 to the left and the negative X, it's going to update the X on G55 to be in the correct position, but Z and Y will stay the same. In this case, because we have a fixed back jaw, we only need to worry about X translation. And we're going to leave everything else as default. And now this probing operation will run off of G54 and it will update G55, which all of our operations will run off of. So we're going to quickly create a new adaptive facing operation. We're going to generate that toolpath. And now if I post process this and use the Haas post processor, 
your post does need to be set up for this. Hit yes, and I'm gonna go ahead and overwrite the existing file. We're gonna see that the probing operation is running off of G54. Inside that macro, S2 means we're updating offset two, which is G55. And you can see that our facing operation is gonna be running off of G55. So this is important to note because they will not update depending on your order. That means if I put the spacing operation up before we have probing operation, like, so, or if I do the other, if I could somehow reverse the direction, there we go. This spacing operation will use G55, even though it has not been updated by the probe. It won't know to check anything else. If you wanted to run this spacing operation off of G54, you have to do something else. And I'm gonna show you that right now. So we're gonna create a new folder and we're gonna name this our G50, G54 operations. So we're gonna go ahead and right click this and click edit. And you might notice that there's a post process tab here. Under it, there's an override WCS offset. This will allow you to override the WCS offset specified in the job setup. So for this operation, say we wanted to use G54 to face the part because we know G54 already. Then we wanna use offset one. Probe WCS isn't gonna matter because we're not using a probing offset in this program right now. So there's our new folder, which didn't get renamed, G54. And I think that's because I already have another folder named that. Drag that into that 54 folder, and we're gonna put that up at the top. So now this operation will run in G54 coordinates. This one will run G54 also. And we'll call that, oh, we'll leave it at that. And any subsequent operations in general, we'll run off a of G55 like we specified up here. So if we do another, say, contour, and we choose a half inch because we don't want to use something that long, do the exterior, change the height to be selection here, and raise it up a bit. So if we wanted to do that contour, that contour is going to run in G55. This will be 54 like the folder and this will update our G55 position after we move it. So that way we know that we're getting the exact position. Now, earlier I mentioned something that we might want to know where this center of this cylinder is, because maybe in our previous operation, what we did is a bore operation that went all the way through. And now we have a hole that we can tie that we can tag with the probe right here. And we can contour this circle using that center point and make it even more exact. So in order to do that, it's going to take a little bit more trickery. So we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call this G56. And inside of that G56, we're going to create a new, we'll make that default first. We're going to create a new WCS probe, again, using the same probe. And what we're going to do is we're going to choose this cylinder. And you can see that it's actually smart enough to realize we're inside of it and it's going to probe the inside. Likewise, if you chose the exterior, it will choose the exterior and it will not choose, will not choose surfaces that are not in the X, Y, or Z direction. So if I choose this surface here, it won't let you. If I choose this chamfer, it won't let you. It only works for surfaces in the X or the Y or Z planes. Now you also need to be careful that if you choose a surface like this, it will choose the center point. So something like this, your probe will not hit anything and the body will probably crash into the part. Likewise, if you were to click this surface, it just chooses the center point. It's not going to know that there's nothing there. So you need to be a little bit intelligent, but for the most part, it can detect quite a few things as far as what you click. So click the inside there. And what that's going to do is it's going to create and move G55, well, G56 in this case, and it's going to put it there, which reminds me, we don't have our folder set up. So we're going to go into that folder and edit it. Under post process, again, we're going to override. Our probe is going to once again use our G55 offset. So we've already probed to find the center of this part, so we know roughly where this part is. But we want to make sure that this cylinder is exactly where it's at. So we're going to use our previous offset of G55, and we're going to be working on G56, which is offset 3. We're going to hit OK to that. Now what's gonna happen is we're gonna run through this, face it with G54. Our probe will update G55, will contour the outside with G55, and then we're gonna probe this circle using G55 because we know roughly where it's at, 
and we're going to update G56 to get the exact center point of the circle. So this is a great way to quickly enable probing inside your operations. The probing routine is very smart. It will do exactly what you want, but you do have to be careful in certain scenarios and you have to keep track of all your offsets. I hope it all makes sense and catch you guys next time.